Hello everyone, Ian Magadera here from Liverpool. Um, the object I'm going to show you is a very small object and it's spent tonight, its first night in my Liverpool home. Normally it's at home and is found in my parents' house just outside London. I brought it to you today and I'm going to show you it and just before uh, I show you it, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. It's a small statue it's a copy, not an original, a statue in miniature. And it's uh, constructed or made in a very base material, plastic. So why am I showing you an object of low or no value? I thought I'd bring this object into the domain of heritage because I think it's really important to consider um, an object like this and how it could be heritage because I think it's very important to understand and have an inclusive definition of heritage. What about heritage as far as migrants are concerned? Migrants, be they economic or other migrants, migrants like my family. So when these people move, they can not usually take many things with them and they might migrate to another country when they were younger. So it's not only the migration from their country of origin to their country of residence, but also a sense in which as young people, um, they're constantly on the move, looking for work, etc. Now, my father told me so many stories where he acquired along the way um, some prized possessions, things that he wished that he would hand down to me. For example, like... Um, uh, this lovely uh, lambskin that he got in Scandinavia. But as a young man, as uh, a man uh, who didn't own his own home, he was constantly moving from one uh, rented accommodation to the other. And he told me the story about many times when he had lost um, and or misplaced uh, his, uh, his great trunk in which he would keep his, his treasures. So migration is a, a story, if you like, of losing objects. And um, the, it's, it's actually quite, um, quite difficult uh, to, uh, to, to uh, transfer and transmit down the generation's heirlooms. But I'm showing you this object here. This is a, a small statue, okay? Now, this object is important uh, to me because it has a story to it. It's a story which um, spans my life. So, first of all, this object represents a personal journey because uh, this object I had in my crib, in my cot. So, this was a little toy if you like, that I had as a child. And I used to be scared of this little statue. Um, and I used to sometimes throw it outside my, uh, uh, my, my crib or my cot. I don't know why. Apparently, I was scared of it because it was completely black. But also, I was sort of attracted to it as well. Now, it's quite interesting that um, an object like this... Uh, survived and remained in my parents' household because uh, toys are often thrown away or discarded as a child uh, gets older. But this, um, this little object uh, stood, was put on a shelf and sort of is survived. So if you like, it has a sort of, a, it's an accidental survivor of my childhood. Something which is not really a toy, but which was used as one. Well. So I was, this made me think as well that um, why uh, are antiques valuable? Why is, is, does, does an antique survive? Well, because really, because so few things survive in good condition. And so it's because many things are lost and broken in the domestic space that antiques actually emerge uh, as the survivors through the, through the generations. But this survived, this little uh, statue was, was, was put on a, uh, on a shelf. Now, if you ask my mother today what this uh, statue is, she will, call, she will call it Batch, 
and she she will say, Ian, Ian, you were scared of batch as a uh, as a young uh, as a young child. Now, as the um, this little statue uh, stood, I it was a bit of a uh, stood on a, on a, on a shelf in my in my childhood home. It was a source of a little bit of embarrassment that I could be scared by a by a statue like this, but. For me, um, this little uh, statue also represents the change that happens through education as a, as a young uh, person. Because I got to know, of course, through my education, that this little statue, which my mother calls Batch, is actually a small statue of a towering figure in Western classical music. And really, he's not Batch at all. But J.S. Bach, the composer's composer, the musician's musician. And as I deepened my studies in, in, in German um, and taking German and reading German at, uh, at university, though French is my, uh, is my job, I understood more and more about this, the, the role of this particular in individual. And... Uh, about how much he is actually an icon in the in the West in terms of the complexity and the beauty of his music. And also, Bach, his name, Johann Sebastian Bach, is became ever closer to me because uh, although French is my my job, German is the language, one of the languages that I studied at university, but a very key feature of my domestic life um, because I speak German with my my wife, Hannah, at home. Also, jeden Tag druck ich mich aus in der Sprache des Johann Sebastian Bachs. So every day I express myself, I speak in this shared language that I have uh, with my wife, which is German. So this little figure, this figure that's made, in, made out of plastic, uh, gained ever more significance to me as part of the journey that I uh, had uh, followed in terms of my own education. So I was thinking that this, in some sense, is, 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 my, is my story. And this is an object that was growing ever closer to me, but remained in my in my parents' home. Now, the reason why I brought it to uh, Liverpool was part of this particular uh, project. And I actually went to ask my parents about, you know, what significance this object had to them. Now, it actually turns out, and it seems that it's all about the story of the object. And I've come to understand in doing this short video that I can actually raise a question mark and think, is this actually my object? Because in finding out the history of this little statue, I asked my, uh, my father and my mother. My father didn't really, well, he remembered one thing which was very, very unusual, that I used to put pieces of rice in the bottom of this plastic statue as a child. And he had to uh, take the, the, the rice out. But my mother remembered something really, really poignant. And this takes us back to the history of, uh, of, of, of migration. According to her, and, well, let's take any object. Provenance is a very, very important term. It's a term used in, um, in antiquities and, um, and antiques uh, uh, in the commercial world. And provenance, obviously, is where an object comes from. And I asked a question to my mother about provenance of this particular object. And she said to me that this object, this statue, was given to my father by his landlady. That's to say the woman who owned the house in which he lived um, before he got married. And this statue was given to him, this statue of a, um, a white German, a Lutheran German, someone um, uh, whose cultural sphere 
his son would like to become very, very close to. But this was given to him by uh, his landlady. And she said to him at this particular point that she was giving him this statue because even though um, he was dark-skinned, this he she felt that he could be uh, he was a, a an individual of let's say moral uh, probity and that he could be uh, worthy of being made um, into into a statue. She was so uh, fond of him, so she passed on this uh, this black statue to him as a token of. Um, of friendship and of admiration. And so this brings us back to the history of migration because it wasn't every um, person who opened their doors uh, willingly uh, to migrants in the early 60s in, in, uh, in England. So again, I come back to the idea of that a story you think that an, an item is actually uh, precious and it's yours. It is, but these items have a, have a shared story. And therefore, little Bach, little Johann Sebastian Bach, made out of plastic, almost worthless, has become a family heirloom. He is black and he is white. He is German and he is from England. And he is a part of our family history.